In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use enamel paints to speed paint your Swamp Color Shaman in under two hours. Let's go. Hey there, Hobby Warriors. Welcome back to the channel for another painting video. If you're new here, welcome. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, check out the channel. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell so that you know whenever I release new content. And also think about hitting that like button. Interact with us in the comments. We're a growing community and I'd love to have you. So in our last painting video, uh, one of our subscribers, Coach Platitude, uh, it asked us to see a full time lapse of me painting a miniature. Uh, so I aim to please, so that's what we've got today. I managed to cut the two hours of footage down to roughly about 20 minutes uh, through a combination of efforts, including losing some of my footage, uh, cutting out things like me shaking paint pots, um, and speeding up some of the clips uh, at four times speed, as you can see on your screen right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let that footage run. But I also want to have a discussion with you all about speed painting. Uh, this is a hot topic in the world of miniature wargaming. Um, and where some channels I've seen in the past, they do a good job of you know, offering some advice and some tips. They don't really, really go in depth with some of the critical thinking that led them to offering that advice. And that's really what I want to share with you guys today. And then we can have a discussion about it down in the comment section below. Uh, so where I want to start off is just kind of level setting and defining what is speed painting? You know, if you're new to miniature wargaming, you probably never heard of the term before. And in your mind, you're probably thinking about, you know, someone who has, you know, black belt level ability and hand control, just slapping paint all over the place. And that's, that's not what it is at all. So the way I define it is... It's an attempt to introduce a number of small efficiencies into your painting workflow to reduce the overall amount of time spent painting while still achieving a level of quality that you're happy with. So if you think about, uh, let's go all the way back to, you know, middle school algebra. So if you've got a graph and on your y-axis, you've got time spent, and then on your x-axis, you've got uh, the quality of the final paint job. As you spend more time painting a miniature, the quality of that miniature is, in most cases, going to increase at some rate. Somewhere on that line, you need to decide where you are going to be happiest. So for a lot of people, you know, maybe you've got a tournament coming up, uh, especially here in the U.S. We've got our, you know, first official Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40K uh, Games Workshop tournaments coming this summer and everybody's rearing to go coming out of the pandemic. So maybe you've got time constraints. Um, maybe... Painting isn't your favorite part of the hobby. Uh, maybe you just are really keen to play games and you don't want to play with gray plastic minis. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you want to play the games. You don't want to spend all of your time painting miniatures. So you really need to decide where on that line you are going to be happiest. Some people, you know, they might be fine spending 15 minutes just slapping on three quick colors and, you know, call it a day. Some people might be fine playing with miniatures that, you know, don't have their bases done. Other people might need every single miniature in their army to be done to, you know, golden demon award-winning standard. That choice is really up to you. 
but if you're looking to save time without sacrificing all of the quality in your paint job, you still want something that looks good. That's what we're going to talk about here today. So first up, uh, let's talk about the tools that will help you accomplish cutting some time out of your paint jobs. Okay, the very first tool, um, and I would argue the most important tool in your arsenal, is a wet palette. Everyone, whether you're a beginner, uh, you know, you've been painting for 20 years, what have you, using a wet palette will save you so much time. And there are so many benefits to having one. Um, now, being new to the hobby, you know, you probably just spent a few hundred dollars on miniatures and books, and you might be concerned about cost. Uh, the good news is, even though you can, you know, buy the most expensive wet palette you want, uh, it's actually a functionally it's simple tool. You probably have everything that you need in your home to just build one for free. Uh, you really just need a sealable container, a uh, piece of sponge, some water, and then a uh, palette layer, which, you know, you can use parchment paper, and you would be totally fine. Uh, the benefits of a wet palette are that, A, they keep your acrylic paint hydrated. So if you're not using a wet palette, say you have a, you know, cheapo plastic palette from, um, you know, your art supply store, that paint is going to start leaching, um, or I'm sorry, your environment is going to start leaching moisture out of that paint. Um, so within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, that paint on your palette is going to start to dry. It's going to start getting goopy. And then you're going to have to spend time mixing in water or mixing in, um, you know, acrylic medium to revive the paint so that you can keep working. Whereas if you had a wet palette, it keeps your paint hydrated for you. So as your environment is leaching water out of the paint, the paint is leaching water out of your sponge layer so your paint stay hydrated for longer uh, you can therefore reduce the number of times that you have to open and shake paint pots and you know remix up the same paints that you are already using and then you can also save your mixed paints between sessions because you're using a sealable container. So once you put that lid on and you seal it, your paint is going to stay in pretty much the same condition it was. And the next time you start painting, you don't have to go back and remix all of your colors again. Everything is already on the palette for you, ready to go. And now remember, the key that we're shooting for is introducing those small efficiencies so that when they all add up, we're saving time. So if you can reduce the number of seconds that you're spending reaching for paint pots, that you're reaching for, um, you know, washing out your brush, that you're rehydrating your paints, all of those seconds add up. So tool number two, you want a large paint brush with a really good tip. Uh, so what I'm using in the video is a Zim brand uh, 3200 series Kalinsky hair size four. And then my smaller detail brush um, that I'm using is an Army Painter uh, brand Wargamer Regiment brush. Now, the reason why you wanna do the majority of your painting with that large brush is because of the belly of the brush. So if you're not familiar with the, the anatomy of the brush, the metal part that connects to the handle, that's called the ferrule. Uh, that's where all the hair of the brush is glued. Immediately below that, that fat part of the brush, that's called the belly. And what you want is for that belly to be able to hold, the bigger it is, the more liquid and the more paint it can hold within the brush. 
so you can keep your paint hydrated on your brush for longer. And now you need that really, really fine tip on it though, because even though you're using a big brush, if you have a fine tip, you can still paint really tiny miniatures. Or if you've got broad flat areas, they're also really good for that. So if you can minimize how many times you're swapping out brushes, you're saving time. Every time you, you know, clean a brush, set it down, grab another one, wet that brush, put paint on it, you're spending seconds. And again, it's those small efficiencies to reduce your overall paint time. So as you'll see in the video, I literally only use those two brushes I told you about to paint this entire miniature. Now, moving on from tools, I want to talk about planning. Now, this is the one of the crucial uh, parts of the process where you can end up saving yourself a lot of time by just taking a couple of minutes and just planning out, you know, how you want the project to go. So the big things that you should be thinking about here, uh, number one, limit your color palette. The more colors that you decide to put on a miniature, that means you're spending time grabbing those paint pots, shaking those paint pots, you know, diluting the paint, um, you know, cleaning off your brush. Again, all of those seconds add up. Now, as a sub point to this, I would say limit your use of premixed uh, highlight shades. So for instance, uh, for the Citadel paint line, which is probably the one paint line that anyone playing a Games Workshop product uh, is used to, and probably the most uh, well-known paint series uh, uh, that, you know, someone new to miniature painting uh, is going to be exposed to. They have created their system so that you'll have a, for every color, you'll have a base shade, or a base paint rather, you'll have a shade color, and then you'll have two or three highlight colors, all for that same color. If you decide to limit your highlight shades across all of your colors, so say you're just going to use your base color and then you're going to use a common additive color to mix your own highlights. Uh, so depending on what, uh, you know, color palette you're working with, um, ivory is a really good choice. A really pale yellow is another really, really good choice. Um, which is actually a really realistic choice because it mimics the yellow of sunlight. Um, I highly recommend that you don't just use pure white. Um, an off-white color um, or a bone color is typically uh, really, really good to use. But if you choose that common additive and then you mix all of your highlight shades that you'll need on your wet palette, You've created all of your highlights using just one extra paint. Let's give you uh, an example. So let's say you're going to do uh, four main colors on your miniature. You want blue, you want red, you want green, and I don't know, let's say you want purple. Using the Citadel method uh, that they you know teach new people on their channel, you would end up needing, you know, three highlight colors for blue. You'd need three highlight colors for red. You would need three more highlight colors for purple and, you know, three more for the last color. Whereas really, all you need to do is just one common additive color. So let's say ivory. And you can mix that onto your wet palette and you've eliminated, you know, 15 other paints that, you know, Citadel or Games Workshop would have recommended that you use. Again, the goal here is to save time. And by not having to go grab and shake all those extra paint pots, you're going to be able to get through your project faster. Now, the, the next big tip 
uh, is to paint from the inside out. Uh, and I know that sounds weird. I'm going to explain it. So what you want to do is start with the innermost parts of your miniature. So those hard to reach areas that might be really deep in the shadows, you want to paint those first. And what this allows you to do is one, you can paint them fast and you can paint them messy because any mistakes that you might make in any paint spillover that might get on, you know, parts that aren't supposed to be those colors, you're going to be painting those in later steps. So this is just, you know, efficient workflow so that you're spending less time cleaning up your mistakes. This is a huge time saver. Um, you know, for instance, on this miniature that we're working on, uh, a lot of the flesh areas, you know, like the arms, extend up inside of the, uh, the cloak that it's wearing. So that's why I started off painting the skin first before I painted the cloak. So any mistakes that I made and any green that got spilled over onto the cloak, I was able to just go ahead and cover those up. Now, I want to talk to you about some techniques that you should avoid. Uh, so layering and glazing. So I don't want to say that you should avoid them completely. Sometimes it's the best way to, you know, get a certain effect that you want, but you should try to limit them if possible. So with layering and glazing, you end up having to wait in between layers for the existing layers to dry, and this will slow you down. Number two, you also require multiple layers to achieve the effects and the blends that you want. Um, Again, the goal is to save time. We don't want to wait. The next technique, acrylic washes. Um, so as you can see in this video, we're using enamel washes to give us all of our shadows. And you can see this is really quick. You just slather it onto the miniature. And in a few moments, uh, once I'm done, you'll see I just immediately use some of the cleaner and remove it from where I don't want it. It's very, very quick. Whereas with an acrylic wash, I would have had to reapply my base color because the wash would have inappropriately darkened, uh, you know, the non-shadow parts of the miniature. And then it once it's dry, you can't remove it. Whereas with an enamel or an oil wash, you can remove it. And then lastly, edge highlighting. Um, now, some edge highlighting can be good, but if you're trying to edge highlight every single piece of the miniature, it's just a time sink. Uh, you really want to limit your use of it as possible. Now, techniques that you do want to use, dry brushing is honestly the fastest way to get edge highlights. Uh, wet blending. The cool thing with wet blending is since all of your shades and your base paints are already on your palette, you can move really quickly and actually do blends right on the model and create really cool highlights and blending effects. Uh, oil and enamel washing, again, we already spoke about that uh, when we were talking about the cons of an acrylic wash. They're just, they're so easy to use long working time you can erase your mistakes um it's honestly the best way in my opinion to get shadows on your miniatures if you're trying to paint quickly uh and then the very last thing is when it comes to basing you know use techniques that are quick and easy so as I'm doing with this entire army project, I'm using the base ready uh, range from Geek Gaming Scenics. I can base a miniature in less than a minute. Just slather the base with glue. Uh, there's parts of the base that I don't need to paint. 
and you know dip it in the base ready mix and you're good to go um you know you don't want to you know use slower mes methods of basing uh if you're trying to do a speed painting project that's just one detail that can really really make your miniature pop and you can do so without sacrificing you know having a great looking base um it it's just so easy and so effective all right so that's just about all the time we have uh for this video i do want to carry on the conversation down in the comments though let me know um what tips that you guys have for speed painting your miniatures uh share with the community um i appreciate you guys sticking through the end of the video and i'm gonna go ahead and show you some uh footage on the turntable of the finished project i cut the footage of me doing the base but if you want to see how i'm basing this army check out my previous video I'll go ahead and put a link up in the cards. And just another reminder, if you like what we do here, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on the notifications, uh, join the community, let's get active, and uh, keep slaying the gray, Hobby Warriors. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.